<laughs> That's it, yeah. Before we start, you have to do the L. Yo, <laughs> one of them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, deadly. So today, today we have with us uh, Jer Harris. Jer Harris is one of the up and coming MMA fighters out of SBG Charlestown and Ireland. Um, a lot of fights behind you. Yeah, small few, yeah. Yeah, good. Uh, finishes. Yeah. Finishes all over the place. That's it, nothing but finishes. Um, and you've been all over the place. So I'm going to ask you about the IMAFs. So you start doing MMA up here with Roddy well, I started when you were younger. Yeah, I started doing MMA up here with Roddy when I was 11. Right. Well, I had boxed a small bit before that, but nothing, nothing major. Like, yeah. Just a little few trainings here and there. But I really started getting into it when I started training with Ruddy. Then I went back to boxing and stuff. But it was always mainly just in the MMA, like. Yeah. Um, yeah, we fucking... Started up here as 11, trained right through. When I got up, got up to about 15, then he let me join the adults classes and that. Uh, started training with the likes of Kordak, Ian Clary, uh, Danny Hall, Scott Harvey, all them lads. And just been like... Progressing and learning off them right up through the years, and that's it, yeah. And then you took a few fights, then, but where I you came on my radar because I'd be watching with the IMAFs, some of your performances yeah. in the IMAFs. The first IMAFs he went to was the Europeans, wasn't it? Uh, now, the first IMAFs I went to was the Worlds, Worlds. in Bahrain okay. in 2018, right. and I had a little, I had a nice little run in 2018. I had fought in. I think I had me first fight in 2007 then, towards, I think it was the summer, then I had fought, at the start of 2008 then, I had f fought up in Belfast, then I fought in Liverpool, and then I think, yeah, me fourth and fifth fight, yeah, it was me fourth and fifth fight was in the IMAFs, okay. at, in the Worlds, yeah. And... You picked up a medal there and that yeah, one? Yeah, I got the gold medal in there. We'll be Kazakhstan and Russia. Russia will be Kazakhstan in the, the semi-finals because I got a boy because I was the, uh, I think cause I was the highest ranked in, at the time in Europe or whatever, whatever it was all over. On your topology, yeah. who was ever the highest ranked. So I got a boy in that. Yeah. So I fought Kazakhstan, good wrestler in the um, semi-finals. Caught him in an armbar. Arm bar, that was the finish yeah. from the bottom. Yeah, 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 fucking tricky little fucker. Caught him with the jab, and I think I went to land the right hand, and he had shot a takedown, and I had looked down like to start stuffing the head, and he had as soon as I started stuffing the head, he started switching sides. Or I don't think I'd ever wrestled with someone like that caliber before. Took me down, and then just got me back to still start doing yeah, me thing. Nice tight arm bar. Yeah, nice. that's it. And then yeah, you came back from that. You had a couple of other fights then, was that clan wars or...? I fought in the final then after that, I right. beat Russia and okay. that was the f only fight ever in the IMAFs to ever go four rounds. Because right. uh, they, de they deducted one point at me for a, a low shot and then the second, because the first one landed I was like yeah right fair enough. Uh, the first one landed and I was like yeah fair enough, second one landed like it wasn't, like we were in the clinch and I threw a knee to the body and he just... I paused for a second and the ref went to stop it and then the uncle of seen him tried to stop it and just sat down yeah. so I was like ah, I was like what the fuck you don't want to stand up fight and uh, so he was just looking up at me so the ref deducted a point then and then sure like even like when we were grappling and if he had took I think he took me down once even at me back I was more active but then it got to the end and I think it was they tried to give they were trying to give the decision to Russia because like it's just most of the judges I think were rushing and stuff but Mark Honor didn't let it go ahead right. and stepped in and he was like no it's going to be a fourth round so we done a fourth round and then I got the decision like first time I went to the decision Robert, Robert. Yeah. and then you came back you fought in Clam Wars was it? Clam up north I fought. actually fought in the Euro 
That Clan Wars was actually before. Okay. That would have been one of the ones before I went to Bahrain. Okay. And okay. then I had fought in the Europeans. Right. I had lost in the Europeans by decision. Should have done a lot more than the fight, but tried to go for a flying armbar. Right. Held bottom for the whole first round. Just wasn't a great fight. Like, could have, could have won. Like, it was 50-50 into the third round. Then he just held me a little bit more against the cage. Then I fought in Bahrain again, and I had lost that fight. To a good wrestler, mm. um, really high level fella, really just really good Dagestan wrestling, like fucking good double legs in that. Then I fought in the next fight after that was where was that? The next fight was in Liverpool or Manchester last August. So right, that's yeah. where we were up to them. That was guillotine finish. Guillotine finish. Yeah, yeah. Nice, nice finish there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Picked him apart for us. You know what I mean? He just yeah. We. So I like to get a feel for lads sometimes, yeah. but I'm starting like that like obviously just I hadn't competed in a while and just the nerves and that and I got in, landed a shot or two, I think, as far as I can remember, I landed a shot or two, tried to engage in the grappling, he ended up torn me onto the cage, took me down towards the end, like got out then he had it, me in sort of like little crucifix, got up, landed two big shots, and when I land I know I land. Yeah, yeah. Seen him going back. And then I was in when I was in the corner in the second round. Uh, Phil, one of the coaches from Aspire, who had cornered me, he was cornering me because I do train over in Liverpool quite a bit. Yeah. So when I was over there training with COVID and all, Roddy and all couldn't travel really. So yeah. the lads Dean and Phil cornered me over there, and Phil turned around and just one of the first times it was said to me where I sort of just tuned in because most of my fights were all first round finishes. Mm. So he says, "Look at the size of the fucking cage, like yeah." You're a high, high level striker, he goes, fucking use it. And when he said it, it was like the blinders went off. I could see the whole cage then. Like, uh, there was no, not a hope the young was getting out of that round once, yeah, I, yeah. once I zoned in on it. Mm -hmm. And you just followed the neck on the guillotine. He was yeah, he, he switched the yeah. southpaw and he came in and tried to throw an overhand and I dipped through the left and I stepped, caught like a single leg, tripped. And I had like knee on belly, and he popped his head up. Yeah. And just set into mount then and mm -hmm. rolled with it. Nice. No, that was a nice finish. That was a nice finish. And you're going over to Liverpool. So, what what brings you over to training in the sport? Is it the bodies or just uh, the level yeah, of coaching? Me, me, good me, bodies over there. Bodies and the coaching, yeah, yeah. really. Like, the lads are all of. Like, I had met the lads when we were out, away in Rome and in Bahrain, but it was when I was over in Rome, I was at the being moving around and I was at the, I was warming a lot of the lads up for that, before that fight, so I even helped corner a lot of the right. lads for the IMAFs, right. and um, I think I was moving around on the mats and I, like, I, I do, I just like to be buzzy, I like, I don't, it, it doesn't bother me, I have no animosity to anybody, you know mm. what I mean, even if I'm fighting them, I'll be a mate woman and if we have to step into the ring and fight you the next, I'll smash our fucking face, you know, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. it doesn't bother me, but, so I was just, I was chatting to a few of the other coaches, I remember I was doing drill, like, I was, one of the uh, Russian coaches was showing me a little bit of wrestling or something, then he had to go out and corner a fight and I seen Dan, uh, Garner and he was holding people on the pads and I went up to was like is it alright if I get a round off you yeah. and he was showing me like he was going through hip bumps yeah. but like you know yourself like my footwork was fairly good and yeah, yeah. I was down them and I was like Wait, like, do you, what about adding this on and he was like Jesus you, like, he was like he sort of knew we knew what I was talking mm -hmm. about then and we were just chatting for a while he goes you should come over to the gym sometime there's loads of bodies you're waiting and stuff like mm -hmm. that like Marlon Jones, uh, Scott Johnson, um, Liam McCracken's a bit heavier, but great bodies to be moving around with. Uh, Aaron Robinson, some really good high level bodies. Like mm -hmm. so, then I made it me like after that I was speaking to Dean then again in Bahrain, and I says fucker after that I had got over mm -hmm. for a bit of training and just enjoyed it because even when when I like when I was younger like even when I was. 14 and 15 it was like in boxing clubs as well it's like you don't re get it so much with MMA gyms like you get a few in the clubs if it's like the SBGs between each other but they'd never be MMA rounds yeah, where yeah. in boxing gyms they're bringing down new lads every oh, week yeah, or yeah, other yeah. gyms are coming yeah. down so 
And even then the, having little in house like it's SPG a fighting team rhino. Exactly, like yeah. That, they have little nights and exactly, yeah, and little expeditions yeah, and yeah, that. Yeah, but yeah. it's like they're the closest thing you're going to get to a yeah, fight because yeah. you're still getting the nerves because you've never met this young yeah, before. Yeah. You get to grin and have a little barney. Yeah. So that was the thing for me. I really enjoy getting over and moving around with other high level lads and it's like the lads up here are fucking like, brilliant like mm-hmm. Ryan Cortis you have Scott you have we had Ian I haven't like Ian hasn't been up in a while but like Danny Hall um, Scott uh, Sean McConnell um, there's plenty of lads up there to good be strikers. learning off good, good, strikers. good strikers good grapplers good everywhere um, and then we always get good bodies coming up mm. as well like from yeah. the other SBGs and things but it was the thing I'm moving around with all these bodies so long it's you start to learn that time and they start to learn you off as well so it's like who's ever tougher sometimes in spars or whoever gets off first we're going over there nobody really has got to move around me feel me style before we haven't got to do feel them out or anything mm-hmm. like that so you're getting a whole new sense of time and, and learning new rhythms and trying to break down other people's rhythms and stuff mm-hmm. and deconstruct what they're fucking doing like lads over there are really good at Dutch style kickboxing so right. it's like trying to move around with that and figuring all their little tricks out and trying to pull them onto shots and learning where to stay safe with them and just we feel it's a good learning curve for anybody who is coming up like mm. to be moving around with like bodies you haven't moved around with before like yeah yeah and Max is enjoying training which he's liking the the straight boxing drills and the circle and half and touching the move and he's enjoying yeah, all that, you know. It's hit and don't get hit, yeah. it's be smart, especially in MMA, you're wearing small gloves. Mm-hmm. You don't want to stand in front of someone no, too long. No. It's alright if you land, pour it on them if you know you've hurt them, but it's like it only takes a little overhand and a double leg and that mm-hmm. could change the round, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like strikes aren't scored the same as takedowns here either. You no, know what I mean? No, no. So it's like if they, you might be piecing them up and he takes you down, takes you down again, the round's fucking even now. Yeah. So it's like that's what Roddy's always drilling into us. It's be all round, be ready to finish it everywhere. And mm-hmm. That's the way we do it. Like. Mm-hmm. And you've a fight coming up. Yeah, hopefully, seeing what happens, seeing the way that uh, it comes out in the north now, or whatever. For supposed to be fighting on clan wars now. Hopefully, if it goes ahead, mm. um. So if it gets going, I think it should be on the twenty ninth. And if it doesn't, hopefully we'll get something next month. Mm. That the same card will be brought back up on a later date. Yeah. But training away and I've started cutting weight and all already. So I'm, I'll be ready for at the end of the month. If something pops up anywhere else and that's not on, I'll be over ready to have a strainer off anybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're looking at taking the many more amateur fights. Think. I've spoke to Owen and I spoke, spoke to Palmy manager I think both of them are, and even the lads over Liverpool have said it to me as well they, like they've said yeah, they're there about for pro it's like but I've even taught myself I, I, Owen said it to me he'd like me to have one more and yeah. what, Owen's my main coach so yeah. whatever Owen says goes yeah. and I trust his opinion 100% so if he tells me I'm ready to fucking mm-hmm. if he tells me I need 10 more I'll do 10 more yeah, yeah. No, that's sort of way. Yeah, no, 100%. But at the same time, he fails one more, and it's time to go. Yeah. Time to let me off the leash then. Yeah, yeah. No, it'll be exciting times ahead. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Exciting looking forward to putting ahead. an elbow to the skull as well. You <laughs> know what I mean? Knees to the head as well. If I haven't been allowed knee to the head, so. Yeah. I'm looking forward to opening up what my whole skill set on someone's face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it'll be uh, exciting times. Hopefully, hopefully the north goes ahead and then. Looking for um, looking for a few uh, a few. That's it, like blood. that's it, and it's like uh, uncomfortable going anywhere. Like I don't, I don't mind fighting over and brave anything. I'm looking forward to get going, especially with with the level of lads we have in the gym. Like the lights, like like most of the lads are like great strikers, good grapplers. Even like Max have a Max there to move around with. It's like, it's like. Like you wouldn't like the lads in the gym would know anybody who's ever moved around with me. Like my IQ for moving around is quite high. Mm-hmm. I'm able to put things together. If you give me an an obstacle, I'll deconstruct that and I'll show you how to deal with it. Or if it's in spare, I can do it. As I say, but like I feel like even Max for me, he does that for me wrestling. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? He has the same. He thinks the same way. So I feel like even wrestling with someone like him who's seventy odd kilo, seventy five mm-hmm. kilo. You know what I mean? I'm able to. 
like he's helped me deal with that I don't think we're going to have a problem anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm looking forward to getting out there and fucking haunting people. Yeah. Making a few quid as well. Been yeah. doing it long enough. Yeah, yeah. Well, haunting people in the ring, shaking their hand over. That's it, Nicely. yeah. Thank you. I know, you have to respect anybody uh, who jumps in there with you, but at the end of the day, you're in there to make a few quid. No, I'm not no. letting them out without fucking, without yeah. a finish. Yeah, yeah. No, 100%. 100%. And um, so we look forward to that. That'd be a good one. Yeah, I can't wait. That'd be Buzz. a good one. That'd be a good one. And what way do you at the moment? Oh, I'm about 60, 63, 62-ish. Right. I, normally I don't walk around as heavy. Like, I walk around a bit lighter, but with the lockdowns and stuff and just training and eating what I want, I've been, I was up at about 65. Right. But even when I put on weight, I've sort of been in shape my whole life because I've never really stopped training. I always doing two or three sports. Yeah, yeah. So, uh Oh, sorry. Nice. Yeah, I've always done two or three sports, so I've been, uh, I've always been sort of fit, and I was always a little fairer. That's why I'm, I'm f- like f- m- fairly good at me back, mm. even training in the gym here years. Like all the lads were always bigger, so I had to be good yeah, off yeah. me back. Yeah. But like that, always being like so, of getting used to having the le- extra bit of weight, and I'm enjoying the cut now a little bit as well because it's. Like I've normally always been just a kilo off fifty seven. Mm. Like I've been fifty eight, fifty nine ish. Where now I'm getting to come down. I'm a lot stronger coming down. I'm mm. able to lift heavier weight. I'm able to put put in more explosive work. Like I'm being a little bit heavier, moving around with the heavier bodies. I'm not being put on me back as much because I have a bit of meat behind me. So I enjoy being able to move around with the bigger lads as well. Wow. And you're getting down to 57? 57, yeah. It's handy if you're walking around with that weight now. But, you know, that's it, yeah, cup. but it's not much of a cup, but for me it's mostly water because yeah, I don't carry much fat, yeah, so yeah. it's handy. Like water load and a good uh, walking with Tristan Kennedy is a fucking blessing. Like, yeah. He's, yeah, like, yeah, like he gives me my plan. If I have any questions, text him once, I, like, text him. He'd be back to you towards the end of the day or the next day with all the answers. Know what I mean? And I know exactly where I am. Normally I would have been, like even obviously not have a much weight to cope, but I still would have been nervous yeah, yeah. dropping weight because I'd be like, is this going to come off me now? Because like looking at me, there wouldn't be fucking yeah, hard to no. lose now, that sort of way. But with him, I'm just... More fuck. meat in a butcher's pencil. Oh, stop, yeah. yeah, yeah. More meat left on the block, yeah. <laughs> fucking yeah, hell. Yeah. But like that completely comfortable dropping weight and feel good at that I've always felt good at 57 but even cutting the weight I feel loads of energy ready to go and still plenty of power behind me Robert, um, do you want to give you a, a few of your sponsors you have a few sponsors give them a shout out yeah uh, first big sponsor who sponsored me first uh, Alpha Mechanical can't thank them enough help me out with all my like, travelling to like to the IMAFs help me out with funding towards them uh, anything me supplements uh, towards the nutritionist as well um, who else have I got uh, the method CBD over in Liverpool help me out with my CBD because if I sleep and stuff I do need it um, Brew Force Nutrition down on the Ballymum Road for all my su- supplements you won't get any better deals than the old big Bob there it always sorts everybody out Especially if you tell them you're from Roddy's look. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? If you're yeah. training out of Germany, recognises you, will always help you out and sort you out as well. Yeah. Um, and then I'm working with the. Then, yeah, that's really it, I think, right. at the moment, yeah. No worries. Give Jared a uh, follow there on Instagram. Jared is he's one. I only get people on this podcast I'm interested in talking to. You, no. you know what I mean? I don't get anyone on it, you know what I mean? Whether you've. 50 million followers are 200. I don't give a bollocks. If no. I'm interested in talking to you, I'll talk to you. And Jared is a... I've been looking at Jared a while and he's a really exciting prospect there with Ireland. So give him a follow. Um, he's going to go on to do big things. Dangerous, dangerous man from Ballymun inside the cage and an absolute gentleman outside it. So okay. give Jared a follow. Um, please like, subscribe and share our YouTube channel. This will be up on Spotify in about three days. SoundCloud three days. Um, trying to bring you the best stuff. I have some um, Whopper guests lined up. 
some uh, people in the next couple of days um, I'm really looking forward to talking to and um, really interesting unique type characters so uh, I'm looking forward to that but please support the podcast like share subscribe give Jared a follow and um, you're with one hit fight management as well yeah, one hit part. management yeah that's that's the management SPJ Charlestown give them a follow as well and um, if with this lockdown being over any of your kids or whatever want to start Jiu Jitsu wrestling boxing get them to an SPG either Charlestown Nice um, headquarters or wherever that's get it. your kids training get them doing something that's don't it. let them be a victim that's it have them out there murdering kids yup yup that's alright for you Robert Robert man Nice one. Robert Jerry.